Alright, what's going on everyone? The release of Bloomboro is nearly upon us and with it comes four new commander decks. The purpose of this video is just to give a brief overview of the deck's core strategies so you can decide which deck is best for you. We won't be going over every single card but I will leave a link to the deck list in the description below. So let's start with Squirreled Away. A Golgari deck with Hazel of the Root Bloom as the commander. It's a 4 mana 3 5 that can tap, pay 2 life, and tap any number of tokens to add X mana. And note, these don't have to be creature tokens, so that's pretty cool. It also duplicates a token every turn. At the end of turn, you can create a token copy of a token you already control. And if that token happens to be a squirrel, you'll actually get two of those tokens instead, which can definitely be pretty explosive. The alternate commander is the Odd Acorn Gang, a 5 mana 5-5 five five with Menace, Trample, and Reach that will allow squirrels to tap to give a creature plus two, plus two, and trample. And then whenever one or more squirrels hit a player, you get to draw a card. But regardless of which commander you use, I, I would probably use Hazel, but uh, tokens, that's what we're doing. So this deck is filled with squirrel token producers like Chatterstorm, Chitter Spitter, and Squirrel Nest. The first makes a 1-1 one, one with Storm, and then the other two can just make tokens every single turn. Which with your commander, that's three 1-1s one, per turn, basically. Then you have Squirrel Payoffs, like Deep Forest Hermit, Squirrel Sovereign, and Honored Dray Leader. The first is another source of tokens that also pumps up all squirrels. The Sovereign is a Lord, and the Dray Leader will enter with a plus one plus one counter for each squirrel you control, and your food count. Your food will add to that, and this does have some food token producers. And then it also is going to get a counter whenever new squirrels and food enter. And yes, this will count for the squirrel token. So if you have your commander, you're putting out two squirrel tokens per turn and giving this two plus one plus one counters per turn. So that's cool. There's also a ton of powerful token producers that don't make squirrels. Things like a Rasta, which makes a one two every time an opponent casts an instant or sorcery. Ogre Slumlord makes a rat whenever a creature an opponent controls dies, and Garuk can make two two wolves every turn. So these can make a ton of tokens that can then be copied with your commander even if they aren't squirrels. And also note that we have multiple ways to get squirrel tokens when we make these tokens or just turn them into squirrels. But all these tokens lead to the second major theme of the deck and that is death triggers. Because we have so many tokens, I don't have time to go over all of them because there's a ton, but you'll find tons of stuff like Zulaport Cutthroat, Ravenous Squirrel, Poison Tip Archer, Morbid Opportunist, Bastion of Remembrance, Moldervine Reclamation, so on and so forth. The important thing here is they all do stuff when something dies and lots of stuff will be dying because you make so many tokens. There's plenty more we don't have time to talk about. We have big payoffs for going wide. We have some new squirrels and some Gulgari token cards and some old ones as well. But basically, if you're looking to make a massive army of squirrel tokens and then either overwhelm people on the battlefield or sacrifice them to drain the table, be sure to check out Squirreled Away. Next up is Peace Offering, a Bant group hug deck with Miss Bumbleflower as the commander. It's a 4 mana, 1-5 with Vigilance that when you cast a spell, target opponent gets to draw. But you get a plus one plus one counter on a creature and you give that creature flying. However, this isn't a once per turn ability and if you trigger it a second time, then you get to draw two, which means you break even on card advantage while also netting two counters and making your threats evasive. The backup commander is Mr. Foxglove, a five mana three five with lifelink that when you attack, you draw cards equal to the number of cards in the defending player's hand minus the number in yours. So basically, you draw up to the amount of cards they have. And if you have more cards than them, which is to say, if you don't draw, then you get to put a creature from your hand onto the battlefield for free. So you're either going to draw up to a high number of cards, or you're going to start playing your stuff for free, which is going to empty your hand. So you can then draw more, right? That's the idea. So if you're not familiar with group hug decks, the idea is a lot of the cards give everyone at the table an advantage, right? It's a group hug. Hey, everyone's having fun. Everyone gets free stuff. You think of things like Rites of Flourishing, which lets everyone draw an extra card and play an extra land per turn. Quain lets everyone draw and gain one life when you tap it. 
So Vala does the same sort of, but instead of everyone gaining life, you just gain mana. And all of this hopefully makes you less of a threat at the table. I mean, who wants to attack the player who's giving them free cards, right? But you have a lot of sneaky ways to take advantage of all of this generosity. First off, you're flooding everyone's hands with cards, and then you have stuff like Forgotten Ancient, Mana Gorger Hydra, Sun Scorch Regent, and all of these are going to get plus one plus one counters when the opponents cast spells, right? So you're giving everyone free cards and then building big things. And remember, your commander can give them flying. Uh, the dragon already has flying, but it also adds more counters and you're going to draw cards with your commander as well, right? There's also things like Octomancer, Perch Protection, and Wear Down. And all of these help divert attention away from yourself with the new gift mechanic. So all of these give you the option to gift an opponent something and then you get an advantage for doing that. So Octomancer is going to give an opponent an 8-8. However, the creature makes copies of tokens that enter this turn. So you also get an 8-8 basically at end of turn. The protection spell gives 4-2-2 two, two tokens, but then you can gift a free turn to an opponent. You can look at anyone, point at anyone and say, you get a free turn. However, during that turn, your entire board phases out and you get protection from everything so they can't touch you, right? You give a free turn to someone and then you phase out of existence so they hit someone else. And then wear down is going to destroy an artifact or an enchantment. And if you gift a card, if you let someone draw, then you get to destroy two of those. And think about the politicking you can do with that, right? You can destroy two things that are problematic for the table and gift a card to someone. And that's the group hug mentality. You can blow up two things and sow some goodwill while you're at it. And finally, after appearing non-threatening all game, there are a lot of alternate win conditions like Triska Decophile, Simic Ascendancy, and 20 Toad Toad. All of these have conditions that just say you win. The Toad is a new one, by the way. So you win the game if it has 20 or more plus one plus one counters. And if you have 20 or more cards in your hand, and I'll remind you again, that your commander puts out a plus one plus one counter whenever you cast a spell and also can draw you two cards per turn. That's also why Simic Ascendancy is so good. And there's plenty more we don't have time to talk about. There's more game finishers that aren't instant win and some of them care about plus one plus one counters from your commander. We have more group hug stuff and payoffs for all that hugging and some new cards for the archetype that are exclusive to the stack. But if you like giving free stuff to your opponents in exchange for them not attacking you while you secretly build up to an explosive finish, Peace Offering might be the deck for you. Next up is Family Matters, a Jeskai token deck with Zinnia Valley's voice as the commander. It's a 3 mana 1-3 flyer that gets plus x plus 0, where x is the number of other creatures you control with base power 1, and it gives all creatures offspring 2, meaning you can pay an additional 2 whenever you cast a creature to get a 1-1 one, one copy of it. So you'll be doubling all your creatures, kind of, and also those 1-1 one, one tokens are going to make your commander more powerful. The alternate commander is Arthur Marigold Knight, a 5 mana 4-5, with haste that says when it or another creature attacks, you look at the top 6 cards and put a creature from among them onto the battlefield tapped and attacking, which is pretty good value I would say. So let's start by talking about Offspring. We'll look at Siege Gang Commander. This is in the deck. It's a 5 mana 2-2 two -two that makes 3 one ones when it enters. However, with your commander, you can pay an extra 2 and make a 1-1 one -one copy of Siege Gang Commander, which in turn is going to make 3 more one ones. And what this means is you just put 7 one ones on the battlefield, which would make Zinnia an 8-3 flyer. And that's sort of what this deck is all about. It's going super wide with 1-1s one and just making this like wrecking ball of a commander. So you get lots of stuff like Blade Splicer, Hanged Executioner, Ether Channeler, which not only generate tokens, but you can then make offspring copies of the original creature, which makes more tokens. The Blade Splicer makes three threes, but it's a 1-1, one -one, right? So making two of them is still pretty good. There's also creatures that have powerful effects that we want to double, like Bosses Chauffeur, Inferno Titan, and Sun Titan. So the first enters with counters equal to the number of creatures you control, which is going to be a ton because we make tons of tokens, then gets a plus one plus one counter every time a creature enters, which 
as I just said, is going to be a ton, and then when it dies, it makes a number of 1-1s equal to the number of counters it has. All of which is very powerful, but even more so if you offspring it and make two copies of it. And the Titans just have very powerful effects that we're perfectly happy to have an extra copy of, even if they're attached to a 1-1. Casting a Sun Titan and then making a 1-1 Sun Titan is still pretty good. You also get payoffs for making all these 1-1s, as you see with Tetsuko, Agate Instigator, and Rapid Augmenter. Tetsuko makes all 1-1s unblockable, and that's going to include offspring copies. So remember those 1 1 Titans we just talked about? They're unblockable if you have Tetsuko. The Instigator is going to deal 1 damage to each opponent whenever a 1 1 enters. And the fun thing here is it has offspring and you can pay for both offsprings. You can have 3 copies of these. And the Augmenter will give all your 1 1s haste. And it also gets a plus one plus one counter whenever a creature enters that wasn't cast to so all your copies and all your tokens. And it also becomes unblockable when that ability triggers. I also just want to mention Devilish Valet really quick. So it doubles its power each time a creature enters. So if you were to have this with Siege Game Commander and offspring it, it actually goes to 256 power and you can make a copy of Devilish Ballet so you could have over 500 power with just this and Siege Gang Commander. So that's a fun little combo but there's plenty more of course from new exclusives in the pre-con, lots of token producers, not to mention some very powerful effects that you get to double but the general idea here is you're going to be making 1-1 one, one copies of all your creatures and turning your commander into a scary sledgehammer with flying. If that sounds fun to you, check out Family Matters. The final deck is Animated Army, a gruel animation deck with Bellow, Bard of Brambles as the commander. And just for clarity, I said animation, not reanimation. You see, Bellow is a 3-mana three 3-3 three, three that takes your non-equipment, non-aura artifacts and enchantments that cost 4 or more and turns them into 4-4s four with indestructible and haste. And also when they hit players, you will draw a card for each one. It's not, it's not whenever one or more hits, each one is going to draw a card. So you're filling your board with artifacts and enchantments and animating them into an indestructible army. The alternate commander is Wild Seer Scouring Maul, a 5 mana 6-6 six, six with Trample that gives enchantments you cast from your hand, Cascade, which is also pretty good value. So while it might seem boring, the deck plays Thran Dynamo, Hedron Archive, and Gilded Lotus. Now if you've seen my videos in the past, I don't really mention Mana Rocks. The idea is to give, you know, just an overview of the core strategy, right? I, I want you guys to know what the deck does. So showing the Mana Rocks, it's not really the purpose of these videos, but it's important here because these animate into 4-4 four, four indestructible attackers that will draw cards when they hit players. So not only can you attack with them for free, but they'll draw you cards that you can then use the mana from these to play to make your army bigger, right? So these are actually very relevant in this deck. Another thing we can do is animate vehicles. I think this is super fun. We got Rolling Ham Sphere and Essigus Chariot. Both of these make tokens. The sphere makes three 1-1 one, one hamsters. Then it deals damage to any target equal to the number of hamsters you have. And it also gets plus one plus one for each hamster you have. And the chariot makes two cats and then duplicates a token when it attacks. But the cool thing here is your commander is just going to animate these into 4-4s four and you don't have to crew them. They're just going to animate into a 4-4 four four for free. So that's cool. On the enchantment side of things, you get things like Unnatural Growth, Berserker's Onslaught, and Gratuitous Violence. Not only do all of these animate into 4-4 four four indestructible attackers, but they make themselves more powerful. The Growth doubles power and toughness. And that's going to count for itself, right? It's going to animate into a 4-4, then double itself to an 8-8, as well as all your other animated artifacts and enchantments. The Onslaught gives them double strike. So if you had both of them, that'd be 16 damage each. And the Violence doubles the amount of damage your creatures deal. So suddenly, that boring Thran Dynamo Mana Rock I mentioned, it can deal 32. <laughs> You can just steal 32 to someone if you had all three of these. You know, it's not likely, but uh, um, you get the idea. There's also some fun, tricky stuff this deck does. It has like Grumgolly, Grothama, and Blasphemous Act. 
So Grumgully adds counters to non-humans when they enter, which might sound odd for a deck that's not playing a ton of creatures, but Belos' ability, your commander, it's static. It's on your turn, your things are 4-4s. Four so when you play big artifacts and enchantments, they will enter with counters. Grothama is interesting, so it's huge. It's a 5 mana, 10 power thing. But what's cool is this is basically a 5 mana draw spell. So it says... When things attack, you can choose to attack it, but that doesn't remove the stuff from combat, right? So normally, maybe one of your opponents attacks one of your other opponents, and if they want to, they can send their stuff at the worm and trade with it. And then when the worm dies, whoever killed it will get to draw cards equal to the amount of damage they dealt to it. But in our case, since our attackers are indestructible, what we can do is say we had three artifacts and enchantment on the battlefield we could animate them into four fours attack someone then just have all of them kill the worm and draw 12 cards so this can be a five mana massive creature but it can also be five mana draw 12 and then blasphemous act doesn't touch your artifacts because your stuff has indestructible so it's like a one-sided board wipe um there's also plenty more we don't have time to talk about Ramp is huge in this deck because we want to get to big stuff as soon as possible. There's also lots of powerful artifacts and enchantments that we didn't talk about. And there's some new cards that trigger when we cast big stuff. You see a lot of this stuff going on. But generally, if you want to ramp into powerful artifacts and enchantments that animate into indestructible elementals, check out Animated Army. And that's it for the Bloomborough Commander decks. I will leave links to the complete deck list in the description below, as well as sponsored Amazon affiliate links, which I discourage you from using if you have a local game store. Be sure to let me know which deck you're most interested in. But in the meantime, thanks for watching. I hope this video was helpful, and I will see you in the next one.